Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Up to date it is a lovely little shunting locomotive from Backman. <laughs> Today's Loco is one that I've wanted to try for many years and recently I've decided to take the plunge and buy one. So the Loco is this, the Backman 03 Shunter and I've got mine in a very handsome black with what looks like wasp stripes in the NCB or National Coal Board livery. Now I wanted to find out when this model from Backman was designed and I wasn't able to find a definitive answer. Now obviously the, well maybe not obviously, but the 03 has been with Backman slash Cada for many many years. The first one was designed decades ago by Mainline and then that did pass into Backman hands. But as far as I know this is not that. At some point throughout the years Backman have retooled the 03 as I understand it, but the problem is I don't know when. Now at some point Backman redesigned the chassis so they transitioned from the old primitive split chassis version to a more modern DCC ready version and the first record of a DCC ready chassis on an 03 is from 2009 that's what I could find but Backman don't always retool bodies when they redesign chassis so it could be that this body tooling design is older or newer than 2009 and since then there have also been different updates I mean the 2009 chassis had a Six pin DCC socket I believe this one has had a more updated one this one's got the next generation 18 pin so obviously there's been an update at some point it's very confusing so I'm not entirely sure how old this is um, I will say that it's not a new tooled model it hasn't been retooled within the last few years at least the body hasn't we'll leave it at that so price the RRP for this thing is quite expensive it's £129.95 which given the fact that this is not a new tooled loco or at least not very recently new tooled seems very very expensive but I did manage to get mine from the model centre for £97.46 which it is to my £100 rule I have this little rule when it comes to small locos if it's well detailed and if it's got modern features then £100 is usually a decent price for a loco of this size you can use that rule too if you like so this has really got to meet the mark, even for the £100 that I've paid. I'm expecting lights, I'm expecting some die cast in the construction, and of course I'm expecting a modern level of detail and top quality performance. So, with all that, quite a long list, let's see if it meets the criteria and let's see what it's like. Here we go, the Backman 03. So I'm actually really looking forward to seeing what this is like because I've never tried anything quite like this before. I do have an 04 shunter which is a very similar looking diesel from Backman and I reviewed that thing many years ago but that's a much older model. It had the old split chassis mechanism and I'm pretty sure it was second hand. So this is definitely going to be the first loco that is anything like this that has a modern chassis and is brand new for me. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, let me show you the end of the box then so you can see the version I have. So mine is is 31-367 it is a class 03 it's d2199 and it's in the national cold board black with wasp stripes and it does have as i say the next generation 18 pin dcc socket inside it so that's what you need if you want to chip it and these are british railways locomotives but as you can see this is the uh, privately owned ncb version i'm pretty sure backman have produced british railway uh, liveried versions of this too if that's what you want so let me show you the back of the box then because there is a brief history of the class there so feel free to pause and read that if you'd like to but for now though, I think I'm going to get this out, we'll take a look, hopefully looking at the model up close will give us some clues as to how old the tooling of this thing is. So let's take a look, I can already see through the back that we've got new modern instructions for this, so that ought to be good. And there's the first sort of look at the loco, very very tiny loco this, I do like smaller shunters. So very much looking forward to this, I just hope that it's decent for my £100, I think it should be, hopefully it will. Right, so the instructions ought to give us some information on the chassis and whether or not it's got lights. So let's find out. So first of all then, accessories, or should I say accessory, looks like the only accessory described here is the alternative to the coupling. So you can put like that blanking plate in instead and then it makes the front or back of the loco more realistic. So we'll take a look at that in a second. Hopefully it will fit, unlike Holby's recent attempt at that. 
Okay, lubrication, yeah, that's all fairly standard. Um, shows you where to put the oil, uh, how to access the motor and such. So that shows you body removal. And there is a sort of a picture of the motor there. Is that going to be a cordless motor, perhaps? Doesn't look like the standard Backman three-pole motor, so that's quite a good sign. They, the cordless motors do tend to run better than the Backman three-pole motors, or possibly even the five-polers. And in this image here, yeah, that does look like a, a cordless, if you ask me. And this does look very modern. You can see there's a place for a speaker to go. This model doesn't have a pre-fitted speaker, but at least there's a place for one to go. Uh, yeah, it shows you where to put the DCC decoder, if that's what you want to do. And then on the back, yeah, this is about the sound installation. So yeah, you do need a speaker, and obviously a sound decoder, if you want to do that. But it's cool that the model is all ready to accept that, if that's the route you choose. So that's pretty good. Right, let's get straight in and take a look at the model. So the accessories pack does seem to be as simple as the instructions describe. So we'll just take a quick look at that. Let's take down. Okay, so yeah, it really is just an alternative to the couplings and the ends there are just painted plain yellow. So yeah, we could fit those if you want to. I don't think I will though, I'm, I'm all right with the NEM couplings. Right, are you ready then? Let's take a look at this loco. Hopefully, regardless of how old the tooling is, hopefully the paintwork and decoration will look modern. Hopefully this will have a nice finish. And uh, yeah, it's all right. It's not quite as sort of premium looking, shall we say, as some of Backman's more recent releases. Not very, very satin finish on there, but it looks all right. And the decoration from a glance looks really, really top quality, which is exactly as you'd expect from Backman. Okay, let's lift this thing out. And wow, yes, you can you can just, you get a sense of that weight as soon as you pick the thing up. And I think, yeah, I think this running plate is made of metal. So it's a die cast running plate. And that is no doubt responsible for the model's decent weight. And uh, besides all of that, I mean, look at this thing. This looks absolutely wonderful. Older tooling or not, I mean, the level of detail is definitely there, isn't it? Really, really convincing looking. The molded detail looks really nice and crisp. The decoration still looks good, even from this slightly closer vantage point. Not sure yet whether it's going to have lights or anything, but um, in terms of detail and separately fitted parts and finesse, looks absolutely wonderful. So I'll weigh this, we'll take a close look, but first let's have a little bit of info on the locos on the shunters in real life. The British Rail Class 03 was a class of 230 diesel shunters built between 1957 and 1961 at Doncaster and Swindon Works. Utilising a Gardner 8-cylinder 204 horsepower engine and weighing in at just 30 tonnes, these were small, lightweight locomotives, ideal for light shunting duties at depots or stations in place of larger locomotives. An unusual design feature is the drive via a jack shaft beneath the cab, which turns the driving wheels via coupling rods, uh, which is dissimilar to more common designs where, of course, one or more of the driving wheels will be driven, which removes the need for that jack shaft. Use of the class by British Railways was relatively short-lived as the demand for shunting locomotives reduced as the 1960s went on, leading to those first withdrawals. While some of them did remain in service for a good number of years, many were sold to private industry where they can still be found today in some cases. A very healthy 56 examples remain in preservation or under industrial use, while very sadly most of the class, which is the remainder, were sadly scrapped. So there she is, up close and personal for you, the Backman 03 Shunter in the National Coal Board livery. And I've got to tell you folks, this thing is right on the money. For £100, this thing is just the job. I think some of the latest prices, creeping up to the £130 mark RRP, that's taking it a little bit far, I think. But while ever these things are available at or around the £100 mark, I think this is a cracking model. The quality is excellent, not perfect, but the number of complaints I have requality are very, very minimal indeed. I would only really criticise the use of plastic handrails here and there. Some of them do appear to be metal, but the ones that are plastic do seem quite flimsy, so you've got to be careful of those. And you've got the very occasional evidence of over-gluing on some of the components. There's a bit of misting around the horn there, but generally the quality of this model is very, very high indeed. 
And adding to that is the die-cast running plate, which brings the model quite a bit of weight. In fact, given how small the model is, its weight of 148 grams is quite impressive. Now, admittedly, it's much lighter than the old Backman 04 shunter that I've got. That thing is 60 grams more at 207 grams. But of course, there's a lot less inside the old split chassis models in terms of features. It really is just a motor, gears, and then the rest of it is just heavy die-cast chassis. Whereas this thing has to offer a lot more, there has to be space for sound and DCC, but I do think the fact that they've included that die-cast running plate has really made amends for that, and it's a good justification for the price, I think. The final thing to say on weight is that it is heavier than Hornby's 060 Sentinel, which is a, a recent shunting locomotive that came out. And I'm going to go ahead and say I think every aspect of this model from Backman is superior to that loco at around the same price. So let's start taking a look at this model. It is wonderful looking, isn't it? It's a simple livery. I thought, oh, it's going to be all right in the NCB black. But I suppose this is more of a compliment to the guys who did the livery in real life than to Backman. But Backman have done a good job of capturing it. But yeah, to say it's a plain black livery... The yellow accents all over this thing really do a good job of making this thing look smart. So I love the yellow coupling rods, as you can see there, very nicely and crisply painted there. Looks fantastic. You've got the NCB lettering, and what's that say? Barnsley area, Rockingham colliery I think number one is <laughs> a little bit small for me but the close-up lens will do no problem and then obviously the most impressive aspect of the decoration is the wasp striping which is really high quality I mean Backman are the gold standard for this sort of thing on the back looks amazing and it looks fantastic on the front as well absolute top quality application there and while we're looking at the front I mean I'm not sure whether this radiator grille is separately fitted or etched or whatever but you can say that it looks incredibly realistic and there's a definite sense of depth to it. You can, you can almost feel like you can see through that thing. It looks right, is what I'm saying, so it doesn't matter whether it's etched or not in this case. And then the other thing which makes this livery stand out is the white. So you've got the white handrails, all the little pipes and such, they tend to be painted white on this. And that goes for the handrails around the cab. All of these are separately fitted, by the way. And then the, the little white around the steps and such. Yeah, it's just a beautiful, beautiful black livery, isn't it? You don't get that many black sort of plain liveries that look this good. But I think this one really does. It's fantastic. Really, really big fan of this and I didn't expect to be. So the level of detail is wonderful. It is a huge step up from the old 04 that I've got. Uh, I guess we'll start at the front then and work back. So buffer beams, you can see we've got buffer beam detail pre-fitted that has not been left for the user to fit themselves. And the buffers themselves are metal, separately fitted and also sprung. There we go. There were no proper three link or screw link couplings included with this model, unfortunately. I think that would have been a nice thing to see at this sort of price, but you can't really complain very much about the level of detail overall. There are lots of separately fitted components around the front of the model, as you can see here. That does include separately painted lamps, to me, they don't look like they're going to have lights inside them. I think that's understandable. We can forgive them that for £100 because that is quite a complicated thing to achieve. Although we have seen it achieved by other manufacturers such as Helgen. But then again, Helgen tend to charge an awful lot more than this. On the side here, you've got the little warning print as well as, you know, loads more grab rails and such, all very nice and fine. And then along the side, you've got some pretty decent moulded detail with the service doors. And unlike on my older tooled version, well, on the 04 that I've got, we do have the separately fitted handles here, which again have a real sense of depth to them. Looks really, really good, does that. Underneath the cab, you've got the steps, and then behind the steps, you've got this sort of gauze behind, which is interesting. I assume that's there to protect the crew or whatever, the staff, from being mangled on that jack shaft. Uh, if you know another reason why that might be there, then do let me know. And then around the back, you've got, again, loads more grab rails, lamps, which are all wired up. You can see you've got the cabling going between them, a similarly detailed buffer beam. You've got the glazed windows on the back with the wipers separately fitted. And again, those are very nice, fine parts. And all of the windows around the cab are glazed, as you can see, nice and flush as well. The door is good and realistic with this very, very tiny little door handle. I don't think that is a separately fitted part, but it is very, very accurately decorated so that it stands out just perfectly. 
And then the last thing I'm going to show you is the cab because there is some decent cab detail inside here. First of all, you have got a figure fitted. You've got a little driver which appears to be painted. Not a feature that we see very often on diesel locos, at least in the UK, uh, but Backman do do it from time to time, <laughs> do do, and uh, they have done it on this occasion. So there you go, little driver, and there are some controls inside there as well, which also appear to be separately fitted. I was not expecting a cab of this sort of quality, but yeah, absolutely fantastic. And there is a light, so there might not be lights on the front and back of the loco, we'll verify that when it runs, but there does appear to be a cab light, which is a really, really nice touch. So it's a wonderful looking loco, the decoration is wonderful, it's got a very high spec detailing, lots of separately fitted parts, and everything is decorated and painted in a very high quality fashion, which is fantastic to see. So really impressed with this. I still don't really know when this thing was tooled. It doesn't look like it was tooled within the last few years, but the level of detail is still high. And regardless of how old it is, it still seems to stand up to modern standards, particularly while it's available for £100 or nearabouts. You can't really say fairer than that, can you? Very, very lovely model. So let's get this down onto the track. We'll take a look at the mechanism and see whether that matches the rest of the model in terms of the quality and features. And of course, we'll try it and see how the performance is. So let's get started. So there she is, the beautiful O3 shunter from Backman down onto the track. And I've already filmed the first performance test, so I won't give anything away about that until later on. And then the next thing I did was to look at the mechanism. And I am so, so happy with the mechanism in this thing. It's top of the industry stuff, folks. Really, really high quality. And I've really got to tip my train conductor's hat to Backman here because they've come such a long way in such a short time. They are definitely the most improved of any manufacturer. Uh, far from going backwards like some <coughs> <coughs> manufacturers have, uh, they're, they're just continuing to improve all of the time and this is so much better than what Backman were producing let's say 10 years ago or whatever in terms of mechanism. This thing is exactly the sort of quality you would expect having paid £100 plus, I'm going to add the plus, yes, for a locomotive. So watch this carefully folks and also let's hope the other manufacturers are watching this as well. Helgen, if you're going to charge a lot for models this is the sort of thing you should be delivering. So we've got wiper pickups going to each driver. No attempt at trying to be clever with sort of axle pickups or whatever. No, basic wiper pickups do the job just right. The base keeper plate is removable with four screws, including two under the couplings, so you do have to remove those. And that gives you full access to the axles. The base keeper plate is connected electrically, at least, with spring-loaded contacts, which allow you to remove it completely for cleaning the pickups and, like I say, servicing the axles and such. Unlike the real thing, this loco is driven with the centre driving wheels with a single gear, which is nice and simple. And you can also see we've got proper metal bearings on the driving wheels, which is wonderful. And here's an interesting little uh, extra fact for you. The jack shaft is fake. It's just the little counterweights are screwed to the chassis. There is no axle going through the chassis there. So quite interesting. Not going to affect the thing mechanically, of course. So here is the chassis, fantastic chassis design, really, really impressed with this. You can see it's untethered, which means there are no wires connecting the lights. You've got, again, spring-loaded contacts for those, so no wires, you can remove the body fully for access. Very, very good design. There is the coreless motor. Interestingly, you can see that this chassis appears to have been designed for a larger, more standard motor than this, and presumably Backman have decided to change that for coreless. Some people are not a fan of coreless motors. I didn't use to be, but now I, I am, I've I warmed to them. I think they're okay. No flywheel on this, unfortunately, but there's not that much room, and you know if the gearing's right, that shouldn't matter too much. You've got a housing for a speaker, so you can put a speaker in there if you want to, but there is no speaker fitted from the factory, which I think is good, because for me personally, and others like me, I'm not paying for a feature that I'm not going to use, and that keeps the price good, which is reasonable. And then you've got this nice, modern, next-generation DCC socket without any wires or anything in the way, so you've got a nice, easy access to the socket. Amazing, amazing chassis, and the gauging is nice and consistent as well at 14.2 millimeters back to back on each axle. How amazing is that? And let me tell you, the quality of the mechanism is reflected in the performance. Let me show you how this thing got on in its performance test. 
Okay, let's cross our fingers then. Hopefully this will be a really decent runner. So I've set it to forwards. Let's just, I won't try and crawl straight away. I'll just give it some power and see if the thing actually works first. So here we go. Does it work? Oh, straight away, yes. And then no, <laughs> it's cut out. Let me give it a little nudge. There we go. So this is 50%. Let's see what sort of gearing we're dealing with. That's 50%, so that doesn't seem too fast. I mean, these things are not fast in real life, but that doesn't seem too bad. Yeah, that seems sensible, if you ask me. There we go. The noise, it seems a little bit on the noisy side. I tend to get that with cordless. That was forwards. A bit noisy in reverse, but uh, then again, it hasn't been running yet, so that might get better. How is the cab light? The cab light is pretty good. It's like a, an orange glow, I would say. I'll have to get a close-up on that on the rolling road, so that's what you're seeing now. So the speed seems okay. Seems good and smooth. Um, I don't think there's any, I don't think I saw a flywheel in there on the instructions, and uh, you guys will know whether there is one in, in actual fact. I don't think there is. So if you cut it out, it does stop reasonably suddenly, but not quite as suddenly as you might expect. So. It's a good free mechanism. Okay, how is the crawl? Has it just cut out? Yes. Okay, so how is the crawl? Let's find out. Ooh, it does keep cutting out now, that's weird. Come on, I want to crawl. This is strange. Right, let's try, we'll try and get a crawl out of it and then I'll run it in. All right, so it started to crawl there, yeah. It's a very, very good crawl. And that is consistent with other cordless locos with decent gearing. <laughs> I have to add that because some of the cordless locos, like the Precedent, they didn't crawl very well, but that's because they were they were geared to run too fast. Or maybe even the gearing's largely the same, but because obviously these driving wheels are so much smaller, it goes a lot slower. But yeah, that's that's fantastic. That is really, really good. Try it in reverse. Mm, a bit fast. Yeah, I mean, that's great. This is a shunting loco. The slow speed is really important. And this loco delivers. There we are, a bit faster. Just keep cutting out. Ah, oh, it's annoying. Really annoying. Oh, no, it's sort of saved itself. Let's just have a quick look at the pickups. Are they actually making good contact? Yeah, they're all, they're all making contact. I think maybe it just needs a bit of a run-in and then it ought to be better. So, yeah, overall, if it gets more consistent and stops the cutting out, which is annoying, this ought to be a, a five-star performer easily. But let's find out. Let's see how it runs on the layout. 50%. Okay, so very good and smooth. You can see the cab light working even from this sort of angle. Yeah, you could see the, the reflection there off the, the crew member. And at this speed, it's not doing any cutting out, which is good. It seemed to handle the second radius curves perfectly, as you'd expect. I mean, it's a small wheelbase loco, so not expecting an issue there. No noticeable slowing down, nice consistent speed, not too fast, not too slow. Overall seems sensible. Combine this with how darn good looking this loco is and also how relatively well priced it is. I think this is looking really, really strong, isn't it? What a wonderful little loco this is. So I'll run it in, hopefully that stalling issue will go away, fingers crossed it will. And then we'll come back, we'll do some more testing with it and of course couple it up to a bit of a freight train and see what the pulling power is like. So don't go anywhere, I'll be back very shortly. Okay folks, I am back and I've got to say I'm mightily impressed. This thing is performing perfectly to the point where I'm ready to label this as a damn good loco. That is my certification. And uh, yeah, I just, I'm so happy that a loco like this has come along because I've started to get used to not really getting what you pay for and giving locos mediocre scores. It's so reassuring to come across a model which does, just does well in every single area. And this is absolutely that. So performance just got better and better as it ran in, got slightly quieter, smoother, no cutting out or anything at 50% speed absolutely fantastic the pulling force the attractive effort is 0.16 newtons which is all right uh, 13 coaches on straight and level track it's not amazing or anything but it's more than adequate for what this is and uh, to test in just a second i've set up a big rake of wagons so if she hauls those without any problems then for shunting duties this loco is perfect as designed so look how smooth this thing is not a smooth start there but that was my fault as you can see, 
dead zone here on dead on uh, express point not struggling quite as much as it was it might still struggle over there but ooh, just got away with it there <laughs> so reliability much better it's certainly not cutting out on just regular straight track anymore go on then is the crawl as good as it was let's see i'm easing it up now this loco does start at a real low speed there we go it's turning that is just absolutely out of this world and this is more or less the reason why i've had to grow to like cordless motors because a good quality one can perform a lot better than a five pole motor skew wound or whatever and uh, i think bankman are using good quality ones i mean the slow speed performance here would definitely suggest that so yes it's not that slow at medium speed it does run a little bit faster than maybe is prototypical but that hasn't affected the low end of the speed i mean this is ridiculously slow I'd say this is more like it, isn't it? And oh, it's just absolutely beautiful at that speed. So let's go and couple, see how that gets on. There we go. And I bet you I can do a nice steady coupling here. Oh, look at that. It's just absolutely amazing. Really does just show what a quality chassis can do. And this is a quality chassis. I knew it the moment I saw it. And the other thing I haven't mentioned is torque. Just to show you, remember all those locos that just can't move their wheels with my fingers in front? Watch this. Torque to spare. Absolutely fantastic. So let's go. Let's see if it can haul the wagons okay. And I think, of course, it probably will. Let's try. Nice gentle start. And we'll go for about what 30 40 speed yeah i think 30 looks good no cutting out at that speed either so that's great okay let me show you what else i'm going to run then so i've got my 04 shunter which i thought at one point might share the tooling with the uh, with the 03 but uh, no this is a much older and more outdated tooling not at all similar to the loco i've just reviewed but uh, still a good runner i suppose and i don't think i paid very much for it so fair enough but i think if you're toss if you're sort of weighing up between second hand split chassis and the more modern newly designed chassis version oh definitely go with the new tooled one so much better and then on the inside line i've got the hornby 060 sentinel which actually cost me around a pound more than this 03 shunter did although admittedly that wasn't so reduced that's more of a typical price yeah this thing nowhere near as good in terms of features i have improved this loco since you last saw it i've adjusted the pickups and such so that it's no longer cutting out all the time that makes a big difference but it's still not quite at the same level as the backman 03 except in pulling power this is slightly more powerful slightly heavier i think and having said that on the pickups it's just cut out again <laughs> embarrassing okay let's watch it climb gordon's hill with a load now we've seen just how much torque this mechanism's got so i'm not expecting to see this slow down i really don't think it's an exaggeration to say that this is an outstanding loco from backman even one of their best i would say uh, it seems strange because it's quite an unassuming looking loco isn't it but when you really start to pick it apart and start looking up close you can see just what an incredibly finessed and high quality loco this is and uh, given the fact that you can it is possible to get these for 100 pounds or in some cases like me even slightly less that's just fantastic it's a really really good value loco and i'm so glad to see that it is backman that have produced it you know i often say backman's loco is a poor value for money and they you know they skimp on some of the features particularly mechanical ones well, this is a polar opposite to that suggestion. This really is a top quality loco from Backman, and I think it shows a big change in the way Backman are designing locos. And uh, it's a change that we are seeing across a lot of their range. A lot of their locos, for example, do have better quality mechanisms now. Uh, but this one in particular, probably just because of how small its driving wheels are, seems to be unusually good and the performance really does match the quality of the mechanism in this case oh how enjoyable what a lovely lovely loco let's have some ratings then for backman's br class 03 and here they are as you can see it's looking really really good and the thing is i don't even feel like i've been generous here i think some of these scores are a little bit harsh if anything so yeah fantastic work from backman 
The level of detail is close. I'm gonna say that honestly. This is very close to a five star. I think if we had the chain link or screw link couplings for the hooks and working lamps, it would have been a very easy five star. But because we are seeing those features increasingly these days, I'm gonna save the five star ratings for those. Performance though cannot be faltered. I don't think it's really nice and consistent now. It's reliable across the points now after running in as well. Amazing crawl, sensible speed, really nice and smooth. Smooth. Ah, you can't fault it, can't fault it, so that's when it gets five. Pulling power is okay, it's about average, I would say. 13 coaches or 0.16 newtons seems about right for a loco of this size, though obviously it's not crazy impressive or anything, but that is more than a Hornby 040 Peckett and a little bit less than a Hornby 060 Sentinel, so yeah, it's what you'd expect. The mechanism, five star, can't fault the mechanism. Perfectly serviceable, very nice and accessible, proper bearings on the driving wheels, spring-loaded contacts, single-driven gear, high-quality motor, easy DCC fitting, lights, lots of great features, fantastic design, can't fault it. Really, really good mechanism. If you don't like cordless motors, then that obviously would probably score a little bit less for you, but now that I've warmed to them, it's, it's a five, easily a five. Quality then, again, is close to a five. I've knocked it down because I think we need to be honest and realistic about this. I've knocked it down to four and a half uh, because of the slightly fragile, over flimsy plastic handrails. Metal ones are a little bit better. And the occasional glue mark, I think that one around the horn was the most noticeable. If they were fixed and this model was slightly higher quality, this would definitely be a five because generally it's built very, very well to a high standard. Very, very precise decoration, which all looks really good. Die-cast running plate, lot of weight, and like I say, the high quality chassis as well deserves a lot of marks there, so very good. Value for money was a little bit of a hard one to choose. I was gonna give it another four and a half, but I think I've settled on four because I have to take into account the price that I paid. That was 97 pounds 46, that's definitely a five star. But I also have to consider the RRP, which is 129 pounds 95. That's less good, I think that's more of a three. And a more typical price for these, I was quite lucky, I think, to get mine for 97. Mostly from a retailer, you can expect to pay 100 to 110 pounds, which is more like a four star. So I've averaged all of that out, and I think I'm gonna give it four star. Overall, great value for money, but don't pay more than 110 pounds. Uh, if you do, you're not getting quite so good a value there. Overall then, an amazing score there of 8.79 out of 10. Definitely one of Backman's best locos in quite a long time that I've looked at. Fantastic work. Let's put that into the ranking then, and it is in second place, just below the Hatton's P-Class. Yeah, that was a slightly better model for slightly less money, I think. And if the O3 had have gotten five stars for value, it would have beaten the P-Class quite easily. So there you go, very, very good loco, very impressive. Can't recommend this enough. So there you have it then folks, that is my review of the Backman O3 Shunter, and like I say, yeah, I can highly recommend this thing. If you want to know what I mean when I use the phrase high quality loco, high quality mechanism, well detailed loco, any of those phrases, uh, then buy one of these and you will see what I mean. Uh, I don't think, like I say, it's impressive because I don't think this is a new tooled loco. I think it's reasonably modern, but it's not something that's only just come out. I suspect that the chassis is a lot more modern perhaps than the bodywork and the detailing, but even so, it stands up, it looks wonderful. Backman's latest decoration technique has done this loco proud, it looks amazing. Yeah, it's just, it ticks every box pretty darn well, I would say. And uh, yeah, I've just thoroughly loved looking at this thing. It was a surprise, I had a feeling it would be good, but it has surprised me by just how good it is. So, thank you for watching, folks. Uh, comment down below, have you got one of these? Have you got a more recent 04? Are they good? Do you agree? Uh, share your thoughts, I would love to hear them. But for now, thank you for watching, and I will see you very soon for another review. All right, cheers, everybody.